Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books, and I'm going to do a quick Friday Reads. Um, let's see. Uh, what have I been reading this week? I'm still working through Cat Compassion and Conviction and doing the Voxer read-along. I meant to finish up Chapter 4. This is actually a reread for me, but I'm rereading Chapter 4. And I meant to do it this morning, but I woke up with a headache again. I had a really bad migraine all day yesterday, which just ruined the day. And then usually it's gone, but this morning I also woke up with a headache, but that one went away after a couple of hours. But I just didn't get to reading it, so i got to finish that up later today. Um, I'm reading Evicted, and I've gotten, let's see, I'm up to page 115. I finished part one. It's just um, a case study of various people's people uh, caught in the... Um, uh, Milwaukee's uh, rental eviction, like low low income rental eviction vicious cycle, and it's exploring. It's really interesting, very well written. Um, it's, there's just so much drug use and chaotic family life, and all these. Uh, a lot of these people's like it's like their their own the system is stacked against them, but also their their own worst enemy. They just. They just don't have the wherewithal to deal with stuff. Um, and I really liked, I didn't like it, but this quote jumped up, jumped out at me. This is on page 98. It says, if incarceration has come, had come to define the lives of men from impoverished black neighborhoods, eviction was shaping the lives of women. Poor black men were locked up. Poor black women were locked out. So, uh, so it's it's a pretty depressing story, and you wonder, you wonder how to fix it. I mean, that's that's what I want to know: how to fix this really vicious, dehumanizing, um, and you know, it's dehumanizing for everyone. The people who get evicted and the landlords treating other people like that, you know, out of economic necessity or like out of a business model that really lacks compassion or a lot of times they have misguided compassion anyway it's very complex and I'm enjoying it I mean it's it's well written about a topic that's really important it's kind of you know it's all about the ugly underbelly of of uh, urban life so Anyway, evicted. That's good. Oh, and I'm I'm doing a 5K in conjunction with this, and I've done three out of the 5K. So the last couple of days I haven't walked. I didn't walk Tuesday, and walk yesterday. So um, I'm feeling better now. It's a little bit warmer. There's something about the wind really kind of can um, cause or exacerbate migraines, um, but it's nicer now. So I, I might go for a walk this afternoon. Uh, but anyway, so I have to finish up my 5K, and then I'll tell you how much money I raised. Um, I'm doing the 5K to raise money. It's a Facebook fundraiser for Catholics for Housing, which is a group, a very local group, um, started in my diocese that helps. Um, well, the, the campaign specifically right now is called Help Pay the Rent. So the money you raise directly goes to help families pay the rent so they don't get evicted. So... All right, that's and that's those both are my nonfiction uh, for nonfiction November, and then I'm still plugging through the way we live now. I still don't really like anybody. I still don't know how long I'm going to stick with it. Now I'm on page one eighty one. Yeah, I'm just about to start chapter twenty two. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really have mixed feelings about this book. I love Anthony Trollope. I want to read all his work. I'm really not in the mood for this, but he writes really well. So, and then I'm still working through Earth Users um, Guide to Permaculture, really enjoying it, feeling like I'm getting a lot out of it. Um, I still need to do a little bit more reading before I post my report, so which I will do sometime this weekend. And then I thought I would just do a quick catch up on what I'm reading to. Uh, the boy, the young boy that I watch, and also a couple other items. So, um, so, um, so the little guy is really into my father's dragon. I've said this before, and I've been rereading him the trilogy for almost a year now. He doesn't want any other chapter books. I've been trying to get other chapter books, 
and I thought that since I had dragons, he would be interested in dragons. So I got him. I got him a bunch of books. I got this out. We're working our way slowly through it. We haven't read it in a couple of days. Um, he's not that interested in it. It's too. He didn't know what a knight was. I realized a K N I G H T. Um, he kept laughing because it it sounds just like night, like you know when you go to bed. Um, and he doesn't really get all the feudal references and stuff. So I think it's just a tad old for him, and it's just not. It, it you know he doesn't have the context to really appreciate it. But he lets me read it to him like a couple pages at a time, and you know we can discuss the pictures. But he's not that into it. So that wasn't that successful. Um, and then I got him this book, Behold the Dragons by Gail Gibbons. And Gail Gibbons was sort of a tried and true author that I would often look for for my own kids when I wanted to give them factual stuff about something. But he, and I thought this is beautiful art, right? But he's just not into it. He just totally rejected that book. But he did like this book, Real Dragons, and all the photos. He did really get into that. So we have read this book several times from the library. Um, and then we discovered this a new TV show. What's it on? Is it on Netflix, kids? It's called Tiny Creatures, and it's kind of a CGI documentary type thing about little creatures. So he's really into squirrels right now because he's really into Pokemon. And um, first it was Pichu, and then What's the other one? Peacher, uh, I forget the name of the other one. And then uh, Pikaru. Pikaru? Uh, anyway, and then he got this um, Pachirisu, who's a squirrel type. And all these Pokemons are like they're mouse types, uh, squirrel types, cat types. They're all like little creatures. He's really into little creatures. And because he loves Pachirisu so much, he's really into squirrels. So we sort of did a unit study on squirrels a few weeks ago. Um, and in October, and that didn't actually go as planned when I planned it as an academic endeavor, but he does have an ongoing interest in squirrels because, just because of our taking our walks and finding nuts, and he likes climbing through the woods in the back of the yard, and, um, and Pachirisu. And so we went to, we had to go to the tractor supply store earlier this week, and whenever, because I have to get chicken feed and chicken bedding and stuff like that. And I just go like once every six weeks. So we went, the last time we went, it was right before his birthday. And I bought him a few little toys. So right when you walk into the store, of course, they had this section for kids' toys. So we went in and the first thing he saw, I don't have it to show you, was this really cute stuffed squirrel. So I said, okay, it'll be an early... Christmas gift or something like that. So I got it for him. I know, spoiling him. He loves it. He carries it with him everywhere. I mean, he's just had it since Tuesday morning, but he absolutely loves it. Totally, totally into squirrels. Um, then we discovered this show, Tiny Creatures, and that has flying squirrel in it. He's really into flying squirrels. Um, and so, um, so I thought, well, maybe we should find something because he, he wasn't really responding well to the dragon theme. I thought maybe I can find something about a squirrel. So I went looking through my old books and I found this one. This is Secrets of the Woods by William J. Long. And it, it's put out by Yesterday's Classics, which I think has changed its name. It might, it might be that if you go to that website, there might be a different, might redirect you. But um, this was something that a lot of Charlotte Mason homeschoolers really like, this publisher. And it reprints uh, a lot of out-of-print uh, works for kids. And so it's Secret of the Woods. And this guy just wrote all these charming stories set in woods. And I did find one about a squirrel. We keep finding ones about red squirrels, and he really likes gray squirrels better. But... Red squirrels apparently get more stories written about them because they're much more aggressive and, and cheeky. And there is a story here called Miko, the Mischief Maker. And so we have been reading that. Uh, it's about a, a man is in his canoe and he's uh, camping out in the Canadian woods, I think. And he's telling the, the antics of this squirrel that sort of adopts him while he's camping. So, and he names him Miko. So... So we are enjoying that, but then 
I remember Thornton uh, Burgess wrote a bunch of books, you know, Peter Cottontail and um, uh, Mother Mother West Wind's stories. There's, there's a bunch of stories that he wrote. And Dover publishes them. So this is the Dover Children's Strip Cla Classics. And I looked up to see if he had a squirrel character. And he does. The Adventures of Chatterer the Red Squirrel. Well, this one has really caught the little guy. He really... He's, he just wants me to read to him. We just started it this morning. We're already on chapter five. Um, short chapters, not enough pictures. He wants more pictures, um, but really enjoying it. So this has gotten him, I mean, he was mildly interested in the Miko one, uh, but this one has really grabbed his attention, I can tell. But just like My Father's Dragon, so I'm, I'm really excited about that because there's a ton of books about these little creatures. So right now he's just really into learning about little woodland creatures. And uh, we've been looking... We've been looking through this book of pictures, um, and he's really into that Tiny Creatures uh, Netflix show, and so it, it's it's been, I feel like Perseverance paid off, and just if dragons weren't going to get him, he's he's really interested in learning about all this, all these little critters, um, and so that's been fun. That's been rewarding this week um, for homeschooling, um, and then... Oh man, I'm really talking a lot. I did get another book. I've totally fallen off the wagon for the a year of reading one, so I'm a weakling. I, I, I made it most of the year, and then I started giving myself excuses, and once that happened, I just I couldn't stay straight anymore. Um, but I don't know if anyone's ever heard of him. Probably, maybe you have. He's a, he's a, you know, a global figure, but Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, he's a lord, I think, um, passed away not very long ago, maybe last week, week before, and I really loved him. I really, I've followed him on social media, and I've watched his lectures and that sort of thing, interviews, and so that made me sad that he died. It was really, really upset, um, and so I bought this book, and I hope to read it with my husband. Um, it's, uh, Judy, uh, Judaism's Life-Changing Ideas, a weekly reading of the Jewish Bible. I think that will be fun to try to read with my husband. We'll have to figure out how we're going to fit that in. So that's my little haul, along with the, uh, Chatterer, the Red Squirrel. That's another haul. And then I did some Christmas shopping. And I don't know if people are familiar with this book publisher or book company. It's a catalog. Um, Bob Lu. And uh, I've been getting this for ages. I, it sort of replaced the common reader for me. I used to love the common reader, and then that closed. And somehow I got onto this mailing list. And uh, back when I was homeschooling, I used to go through and just pretend like if I could only use this catalog to teach, what would I get? Um, and it was a fun game I played. Um, but so I kind of did that this year. I thought, okay, if I'm going to order gifts... How many can I get from this? So I so I have pretty much gotten something for everybody in my family from this catalog. I just ordered like $500 worth of stuff yesterday. But I've gotten a lot of uh, Christmas shopping done. We're not going to have a big Christmas anyway. I mean, not with lots of big gifts and that sort of thing. So just some thoughtful, you know, I thought appropriate to the different people I want to give it to. And I'm glad to just buy from the, and support this this uh, book catalog. So, so uh, let me know if you've heard of this. And um, and so that's it. I think that's it for me. 14 minutes. Wow. So this is my Friday reads and miscellany. And um, I'm going to put up my permaculture report over the weekend at some point. And so that's it. So happy reading. Oh, did you notice that I put my finally hung my pictures up on the wall? Wait a second. Right there, look. <laughs> My husband loves lighthouses. So one year I um, put up, uh, I got him a lot of lighthouse pictures to put up in the room. Um, and so look at that. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed. It's been like six years or something. How, when did we paint this room? We're that type of family. We take the pictures down and they never go back up again. We just stop seeing it until finally something jolts me. And... Uh, and so we put them up, I put them up earlier this uh, week.
Did I do it Sunday? I think Sunday night. Anyway, okay, that's it. That's enough of me jabbering. I will talk to you later. Happy reading. Bye.